So our agenda tonight, we're going to start by talking about safety procedures. Uh, then we'll go on to some of our supplies for sampling, our water sampling procedure, talk about the physical observations we make after we take those samples, and then sample drop off. Um, first off, though, I want to give a really big thank you to all of you for showing up for this training and for joining us for the 2022 swimming season. Our, we love that. Some new volumes, so. So for safety procedures, uh, we always recommend that you wear something that's brightly colored or reflective. Uh, a lot of our sites are near busy roadways and we want to make sure that you're staying safe and easily visible by any cars coming by. Uh, you should also make sure that you're sure of your footing and that you're moving slowly, especially if you're walking through streams or walking through vegetated areas to get to your sampling location. Um, you just want to make sure that before you lift up your other foot, you really have a, a good base set up. Uh, because we are sampling so early in the morning, there are going to be some months when it is still dark out. Uh, so please bring a flashlight along with you when it is dark. It's always a good idea to let someone know where you're going and when they can expect you to come back, uh, especially if you're going out and sampling on your own. That way, if God forbid anything does happen, there's someone who knows to go looking for you. Um, we also ask that you always wear gloves when collecting your samples. I'll talk a little bit later about how this is important for the integrity of the samples, but there are also sites where our water quality has been shown to be pretty poor, and we don't want you to uh, risk getting sick from touching your water or um, anything like that. Never use your sampling cooler to store food and beverages. Uh, that's kind of on the same note as that previous bullet where some of our water does uh, contain contaminants that could make you sick if you consume them. So you really want to avoid any potential cross-contamination with your samples and food or beverages that you plan on consuming. Uh, if you do use a bridge buddy, you want to make sure that you always keep two feet planted on the ground. Uh, you don't want to go over the bridge with your bridge buddy and your samples. So that's a, an important one. And now we can move on to supply. So uh, some might say the most important supplies for collecting a water sample is your bottle. So we've got a couple of different bottles here on the screen. That first one with the red cap is only used by people who have a bridge buddy. Uh, and that one is used for making observations like taking the temperature of the water, uh, smelling the water, and looking at clarity and color. Our next sampling bottle, the smallest one, is for your uh, bacteria sample. Uh, the next bottle, uh, the largest bottle you'll have is for the nutrients. Most bottles that you'll be getting throughout the season will actually be brown, but they will be the same size and shape of this bottle pictured here. And then finally, you have your medium-sized bottle that says fill me on top, and that's for collecting your water sample that will be used to test pH. Uh, along with your sampling bottles, you also want to make sure you have your gloves. Those will be coming with your bottles every month. So you should have all of that kind of bundled together and ready to go for you. You also want to make sure that you have a field data sheet and a clipboard. That would be useless without something to write with. So it's a good idea to bring a pen with you, especially a black ink pen is really preferable uh, for clarity's sake. You want to make sure you have a cooler with ice for your samples. You also have a thermometer to take air temperature and water temperature. And then if you use it, you might have a bridge buddy or a sampling pole. And if you're looking at collecting flow data, you might have a yardstick and a timer if you're planning on doing the float test. Also kind of a, a crossover between the previous section on safety and the section on supplies to not forget to wear your reflective clothing and bring a flashlight when it's dark. Okay. Uh, so this is the first section of the data sheet that you'll be filling out every month. And this is most of the stuff that you can kind of get done before you actually collect your sample. Uh, really basic stuff. You can add your name and the date. Uh, you can also add your arrival time. And then the end time is something that you'll end up filling out after you've collected your samples. Uh, this one is forgotten a lot. So just a reminder to pop up to the back, the top of your data sheet and add that end time. Then you're going to add your site ID. The site ID is the, the basically six digits or uh, letters that make up your site ID for your location. Uh, this should be on your bottles, but if you have any questions about what the site ID is, feel free to reach out to me. 
And then that's similar, but not the same as the site description where basically you're uh, writing down on the sheet where exactly you're taking the sample. This is especially helpful if you might miss a sampling date and we have a substitute going there. We wanna make sure that people are sampling at the same locations. And then pretty self-explanatory, uh, just mark down what the current weather is. And then is the nearby pavement wet? Uh, this last question is just to help us see any potential small differences in weather and rain patterns between different sites. And then there's also this gray box up here. You don't need to worry about that. That's just for uh, office use. Um, so you don't need to touch that one. And we are on to our water sampling procedure. Uh, so you need to remember that you can't begin sampling before 6 a.m. You can arrive at your site before then, but please don't collect your sample until after 6 a.m. Uh, you want to remember to take your thermometer out when you arrive at your site and allow it to acclimate to the air temperature. This is especially important if you're going out on a really hot day or a really cold day and your car might have the heat or the AC on and your thermometer might be at a different temperature. Um, so you're basically just giving it time to come down or come up to the temperature that it is outside. And then you want to put your gloves on before you begin sampling. Um, it's best if you fill out that top part of your data sheet before you put your gloves on. That way you're limiting any potential contamination of your gloves before you take your sample. Uh, now on to the actual sample collection. Uh, I'm going to start with direct fill because that's what most of our volunteers do. So direct fill is basically involves a volunteer going down to the edge of the water and putting the bottle directly into the water to collect their sample. Uh, when you do this, just like this picture shows, you want to put your bottle with the opening of the bottle um, towards the, the downstream area. So basically, uh, almost counterintuitive, you'd think you'd want to put it in so the flowing water flows directly into the bottle. Instead, you want to put it in the other way so the water is able to kind of passively flow into the bottle. This helps prevent things like uh, floating leaves and sticks on the surface of the water from going into your bottle. When you're collecting your samples, you want to make sure that you're collecting your bacteria sample first, and you want to leave about a half inch of headspace for this sample. Next, you'll collect your nutrient sample, and you're also going to leave about a half inch of headspace for that one. And then finally, you'll collect your pH sample. Um, and your pH sample will be the last one, and you're going to try to leave as little to no headspace. Um, this is because if there's air in the bottle with the water sample, it can potentially change the pH by the time that it actually gets tested with the probe at the office. Um, so again, you're starting with your bacteria, that smallest bottle, that's because that's the easiest one to contaminate. Then you're collecting your nutrient sample and then finally your pH sample. A reminder to avoid touching the insides of bottles or the caps. This could potentially contaminate the sample, uh, especially that bacteria bottle. We wanna be particularly careful with that one. And then you wanna put your, your samples on ice immediately after filling the bottles. Um, that's because there's some degra degradation of those samples if they're not put onto ice, and then we can't use that data anymore. Uh, our second method of sampling is with what's called the bridge buddy. Um, the bridge buddy is basically this system that we've created for lowering sample bottles into the water from a bridge. That way, if you can't access the water easily uh, by foot, you can do it from the road or from a bridge above the water. Uh, the first thing you want to do with your bridge buddy is triple rinse it. So basically dipping this part that the bottles are going to touch in the water two to three times before you actually load your bottles into it. And you want to try to sample from the downstream side of the bridge if possible. Um, that's because roadways can potentially have a large impact on water quality and you want to make sure that we're capturing that when we look at our samples later. Uh, and when you're at a site with a bridge buddy, you're going to go through that same order. So you'll start with your bacteria bottle and your nutrients bottle on either side of the bridge buddy. And then for your second sample, you'll collect your pH and you'll use the red capped bottle to look at temperature, water clarity, and smell. In addition, if you're using one of the arm extenders, which I don't know how many volunteers are actually using right now, but if you are, we ask that you uh, please triple rinse that tool as well. So do the same dip in the local water before you actually put your bottles in. 
Uh, one kind of tricky thing that uh, I don't know how many people are aware of how, uh, how it works is that sometimes we have to collect what are called duplicate samples. And a duplicate sample is exactly what it sounds like. You're basically just taking double the samples. This is a really important thing for us to do in order to make sure that our data is of a certain quality. Uh, basically, we're collecting two samples from the same site at the same time, and then all the results for those bottles should be really similar to each other. And that helps to make sure that our process is working the way it should. Um, duplicate samples mean that you're collecting two of each sample. So you'll start with your two bacteria bottles, then your two nutrients, and then your pH. So you're doing them kind of in pairs. So if you have a bridge buddy, you'll do your two bacteria as the first sample. Or if you're doing direct fill, you'll fill one bacteria bottle, then the other bacteria bottle, and then you move on to your other sets of bottles. Uh, I'll also note that you only need to fill out one data sheet if you're collecting these duplicate samples. Um, so you can just, there's a one spot on the regular data sheet that you just mark that you collected a duplicate sample. You don't need to do two separate data sheets for your regular sample and your duplicate. Um, these duplicate samples really don't happen very often. Uh, each volunteer might get asked to do one once every two years or so. Um, so if you haven't done one of these in a while, that's okay. <laughs> uh, and I will let you know that you're taking one before uh, you go out sampling that day. So I'll give you two sets of bottles for that sampling day. Uh, now we're on to that next section of the data sheet. Uh, so you're going to fill in your sampling method. We'll say that I used the bridge buddy and I sampled from the downstream side. We'll say whether we took a duplicate. I did not take a duplicate. And then you're going to fill in the, the time you collected each of your samples. And these sample types are listed in order that you're supposed to collect them. So your bacteria time should be the earliest, then nutrients, and then pH should be the last sample you're actually collecting. And then you want to make sure that you're uh, checking the box that says your samples were iced immediately. These two sections right here, the are duplicates being taken and the were samples iced immediately, are the two sections that I think are missed on the data sheet uh, most often. The, the first one, the duplicates, is easy enough for me to figure out. The were the samples iced immediately is really, really important for us to know and whether we can actually use that data later on. Um, so last year, you might have gotten an email from me asking you to confirm that you had put your sample on ice, um, which you might get a, again from me this year if you forget to check it. So if you could try your best to remember, uh, that would be fantastic. Uh, here's a quick reminder on how to take your gloves off after you've collected your sample. You really want to try to avoid touching the outside of your gloves that could have possibly touched contaminated water. Um, so you're going to pinch the base of your first glove, hold it in the, the hand that's still gloved, and then slip that gloved hand over onto the other one so you kind of get this bundle of glove in your hand where you're not touching any of the contaminated portion. You're also going to take some physical observations while you're at the site. Uh, this includes temperature. So everyone's going to get a thermometer with their first bundle of bottles for the season. These are going to be freshly calibrated and made sure that there's no air bubbles in them. So they should be all set to go for the season. Uh, you want to make sure you're measuring air temp first and then water temp. Uh, you can take your air temp after it's kind of acclimated to the outside uh, temperature. Uh, and then you can dip it into the water to actually find the air temperature. Uh, you also need to record your thermometer number on your data sheet. So this is normally just written on the back of the thermometer with a Sharpie. So you can see here on this thermometer, the number is 2019-12. And when you're reading your uh, temperature, you want to read to the nearest half degree. And a quick reminder that when you're writing down the air temperature on your data sheet, it should only be air temperature that you've collected with the thermometer. Um, so it should be in Celsius because that's what our thermometers read in. If we do find um, a temperature taken in Fahrenheit, then we tend to flag that data because we're not sure whether it was taken with the thermometer at the site location or if it was just collected on someone's like phone looking at the weather app. So this is the next section of our data sheet. So filling in that thermometer number with the number on the back of it, doing air temperature first and then water temperature. And then we're looking at a couple other uh, observations that you can make. So first looking at water clarity, basically how, how well can you see through the water? Is it clear? Is it cloudy? Then we're looking at water color. So uh, is it clear? We can see right through it. Does it look like a weak or strong tea? 
or it might have a green or blackish color to it. And then finally, you want to um, smell your water and see if there's any like strong observations you can make. It might smell earthy or like rotten eggs. Uh, sometimes it might even smell like petroleum or asphalt. And if you have any different observations that you make about the water that isn't listed in these options here, you can also check the other box and make a comment about what you've observed. Um, the depth and velocity data are widely optional at this point. It kind of depends on whether this is something you want to collect at your site. So for you just something like a ruler that's stiff, the depth try to do it in the same spot every time you collect your water sample. So for all six months, you really want to try to collect that depth from the same location. Um, you can see here it's reported in inches. Uh, a few of our sites, maybe two or three, have a staff gauge at them. If you are at one of those sites with a staff gauge, if you could try to collect that data for us, that's really helpful. And then finally, you can also get an idea of how fast the water is flowing using what's called a float test. So that's what this last section is for. Basically, you're going to measure out an approximate distance along the stream, say 10 feet, and then you're going to drop something like a leaf or a stick on the surface of the water and see how long it takes to get from the beginning of that 10 feet to the end of that 10 feet. And that gives us an idea of how fast the water is flowing. Uh, so for instance, in trial one, it took 10 seconds for a leaf to float 10 feet. We're going at about one feet per second in the water. And then if you can't collect either of these pieces of data, you can just check these boxes here saying you can't measure depth or flow. Okay, and then you are ready to drop off your samples. So we have four drop off locations that you're bringing your samples to. We have lovely drop off coordinators, a few of which I see on the call right now, who will help you affix your labels to uh, your samples and get you all set for the next sampling session. So the procedure for your sample drop-off, um, right now all of our sites are still outside because of COVID. Um, if drop-off coordinators have any interest in changing that, let me know. I think right now we're going to keep our drop-off locations outside and not require masks. However, if you want to wear a mask, please feel free to do so. Um, totally optional and up to you. Uh, we ask that you get to your drop-off locations before 7.30 a.m. Um, this is because there are what are called hold times on our water quality samples. So we have a certain amount of time to collect our samples and then get them analyzed at the lab. So everything is kind of on a timeline. Um, so we ask that you get your samples to each drop off location before 730. Uh, when you get to your drop off location, if no one else is at the table, you can approach the table. You'll get sample labels from the drop off coordinator and you're going to fix them to your uh, bottles. I'll go over that in one second. Then you can place your labeled samples in the cooler with your drop off coordinator and hand them your data sheet to go in the folder. And then you have to grab your bottles for the next sampling event. That's kind of the end of your morning. Um, so really quick for the labels, you'll see you basically get two stickers for two of your bottles. Um, so these are going to go on the two bottles that are going to the lab to be analyzed. So your bacteria bottle and your nutrients bottle. You're going to fill in your name on both of these labels. You can see I wrote my name under the collected by area on both of them. And then you're going to fill in the date and time collected. And please note that the time on both of your labels has to be the same. So even if you collected your nutrient sample two minutes after your bacteria sample, you can just put down the earliest time that you collected either of your samples at. So for this one, I collected my bacteria sample at 617, so I'm writing that for both of my samples. And then you're going to have to put these samples on your bottles. So uh, the sample label with the S on it goes on your smallest bottle, which was for bacteria. And then your other label goes on your largest bottle you have. Uh, and your drop-off coordinators can help to make sure that you're doing this properly. I'm sure they can answer any of your questions. And if they can't, then they can ask me a question and I can answer your question. Okay, um, so with that, I wanna give folks a reminder that we have a supplies pickup coming up on this Saturday from 9 to 11 a.m. I'm gonna be there with coffee and bagels and supplies for everyone including drop-off coordinators. If they want to swing by, I'll have your bottles and um, boxes with all your supplies ready. 
Uh, if you can't make that time, let me know because we can schedule another time for you to pick up your bottles before our first sampling event on the 12th, which is next week. Um, so very exciting. Uh, in your supplies pickup, you're going to get a bottle set, a thermometer, and also seven data sheets for the season. I'm giving you one extra in case something goes wrong. And then these are our sampling dates for the season. So each of our sampling dates is on the second Thursday of every month. Um, they're listed right there. They're in the emails I sent you, but feel free to send me questions if you have any. Uh, and please email me if you're not able to make one of those sampling events so I can find you a substitute. Uh, with that, I'll take questions. And really quick, I'm just going to put this URL back on the screen. I'm also going to pay attention to who the participants are in our Zoom meeting today. Um, but it's helpful if you guys go to this URL and fill out the contact information. I'll know that you also attended the training. Um, and I'm not going to copy and paste it into the chat because I heard that that did not work very well. But hopefully it's a short enough URL where you're able to type it into the chat yourself. Um, so if anyone has any questions, they are uh, welcome to put them into the chat, or if they want to raise their hand, I can call on people. Okay. Um, Lisa, I can put together uh, an email chain with folks in Milton and see if anyone is able to pick up your bottles for you. Uh, and Kelly, yes, welcome. You're one of our new samplers. I will send you all the addresses and information you need for your drop-off location. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, yes, and I will include a link to the training presentation and the follow-up email as well as a PDF of all the slides. That way, if you have a specific question and want to skirt around to a different part, you can. Um, and yeah, Tabor, feel free to email me. I'm going to be in the office a lot next week, and we can just set up a time for you to stop by and grab your bottles. Uh, Whitney, I can email you your sampling ID number. Also one of our new samplers, so welcome. Okay. Awesome. So that was pretty quick, hopefully pretty painless. <laughs> um, if any other questions come up for folks, please feel free to send them my way. Uh, questions about this, questions about general swimming things. Um, I will also pop in really quick, see if this link works. Um, this is a link for the presentation on the 2021 water quality data we collected last season, if you weren't able to watch that video. Um, we also have an interactive map, and I'll make sure I send the link around to that because it's really fun. You can go and look at the data for your own individual site as well. Okay, awesome. Well, I hope to see some of you guys on Saturday. Thank you so much for joining, and have a good rest of your evening. <laughs> <laughs>